Yes. A, a very warm welcome to each of one of you on the twelfth episode of the Nature's Orbit Torchlight series. Today is June fifth, World Environment Day, and it's a pleasure and honor to have with us Dr. Michael V. L. Ch Chandama. He holds a PhD in environmental biotechnology, specialized in biodiesel production. He is currently a mover envoy under Movers Program, a fellow of Youth Empowerment and Climate Action Platform, YECAP, a member of Young People Action Team, YPAT, under Generation Unlimited, a young ambassador of Earth Day organization, which focuses on youth participation in climate action. Hailing from an indigenous community himself, Mizo tribe, he has co-founded an organization called Chavikan, which means to uplift, that is committed to spread awareness on sustainable development goals among the youth of his community and promotes young local entrepreneurs by advertising and marketing their products for free and knowing the importance of 21st century skills for the development of youth especially in the tribal community. He is also currently a project coordinator in Youth for Sustainability India Alliance and project assistant in the Department of Environmental Science in Mizoram University. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Chandama. It's wonderful to have you here and thank you so much for taking out your time for us. Thank you so much for asking me to do this interview. Uh, I have been a witness of the work of Nature's Orbit, and I am really impressed with everything that the organization has done, and I'm pleased to be here. Thank you so much. It's an utmost pleasure and honor, and thank you for your very kind and encouraging words uh, for our initiative. Thank you. Uh, so I'll start by asking you, uh, yes. please tell us about the sustainable biodiesel that you have produced from microalgae that you have found in your research in PhD? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, thank you so much for the question. Yes, so before I really dive into how the biodiesel is produced from microalgae, I'll just give a brief introduction of what is a biofuel and what is biodiesel. So uh, there are two types of commonly used biofuels, which are bioethanol and biodiesel. And what are these biofuels? These are the fuels which are derived from organic biomass. It can be a vegetables, it can be a microorganism, it can be agricultural waste. So when we produce a fuel from this, they are called biofuels. And two of the most commonly used biofuels for transportation are bioethanol, which can be used in place of petroleum, and biodiesel, which can be used instead of this conventional diesel. And my work focuses on the production of biodiesel. And focusing more on biodiesel, uh, if any vegetables or if any biomass, organic biomass has an oil content, it can be converted, the oil can be converted into biodiesel. For example, sunflower seeds has lots of oil, so it can be converted into biodiesel. Uh, palm oil has lots of oil, but it can be converted into biodiesel. So there are lots of organic matter that can be converted into biodiesel. But one more thing which we have to remember is that not every uh, crops ha that has oil should be converted to biodiesel because there is, a, there is a competition between food and fuel. So we are trying to research for a biomass which might not have any other uses. So we have come, we, research has shown that microalgae are a very potential uh, feedstock for the production of biodiesel and to most of the people who might not know what are microalgae so I, I believe that we must all know what are seaweeds so seaweeds are a type of algae they are macroalgae and there are <clears throat> sorry there are other types of algae like seaweeds which cannot be seen with the naked eye so these are called microalgae when you see a polluted water bodies, it might be greenish in color. So those are the organism which cause the polluted water to be greenish. So this microalgae can thrive in various types of environment. It can be aquatic, it can be 
they can drive on lands, they can drive on water, wastewater, etc. So they are found in uh, all these places, and we try to uh, extract oil from this uh, algae or microalgae. And when we extract this oil, we convert it into a biodiesel by the process known as transesterification. And the reason why I called it a sustainable is that it uh, because these microalgae they are very high in in their propagation or in their dividing. So within a short amount of time, we can have lots and lots of biomass of microalgae. And also the second thing is that they have a very high oil content. So a research shows that the, the oil content of sunflower seeds, the oil content of palm oils, all this is much lower than the oil content of microalgae. So microalgae has a much higher oil content. And also while growing microalgae for biodiesel production, this microalgae take up atmospheric carbon dioxide. So not only we produce biodiesel, while growing microalgae, we actually uh, decrease the number of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. As we all know, carbon dioxide is one of the gases of greenhouse gases. And also, last but not the least, while, uh, as I have mentioned, this microalgae can grow in uh, water which are polluted. So uh, when we, uh, we can actually use wastewater for the culturing of this microalgae. And when this microalgae, microalgae are grown on wastewater, they take up the, the pollutants of the wastewater and use it for their growth. So that means to sum up as a whole, while growing microalgae for biodiesel production, we decrease the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we decrease the number of pollutants in the polluted water, and because of this microalgae blooms, and from that microalgae we extract the, we extract the oil, and that oil is converted into biodiesel by a process known as transesterification. And last, all the biodiesel which are, not, which are produced cannot be directly used for transportation or for a vehicle. It needs to have a, a particular standards. So there are different types of standards. In India, we have Indian standards. In Europe, they have the European norms. And in America, they have American standards. So the biodiesel which are produced needs to have a specific indications that they have met all these specifications. And I'm proud to say that the biodiesel which my team and I have produced conforms to all these in, uh, international standards. So I think that can be the answer to the first question. Thank you. Wow, uh, that's very interesting. And you know, uh, it's I think uh, interesting for the people who are listening to this right now uh, about a sustainable, uh, you know, uh, sustainable uh, replacement uh, for this kind of, you know, diesel and biodiesel. So it can be used and uh, very uniquely made from uh, microalgae, as you have, have explained, and conforming to all the international norms. It is, uh, it is wonderful to know about that. And I'm sure a, a people, uh, you know, listening to this would really take this up seriously uh, a, a, as a, uh, you know, replacement to the harmful, uh, harmful products that are used uh, yeah. and harmful sources of energy. So uh, move, moving on to the next uh, question, uh, uh, could you let us know your journey in the Movers Program Youth Empowerment in Climate Action Platform, YPCAP, Young People's mm -hmm. Action Team, YPAT, and Generation Unlimited, and as a young ambassador of Earth Day organization? Mm. Yes, thank you for the question. So my movers, my movers journey begin, actually begins in the beginning of 2020, yes. So in Mizoram, uh, the government agency, which is called Mizoram Youth Commission, and one NGO, which is called Roads and Paid for Work, they have uh, conducted a competition where the top 10 finalists will go to Asia Pacific Youth Exchange is a program which takes place in different countries in different year. And in 2020, it was taking place in uh, Thailand. So uh, there are three rounds of selection. The first one is we have to make a video of which SDGs are we interested in and it, which SDGs we are working on. And then the second is the essay. We have to write an essay. And the third is the, uh, the interview. And 
after going through that, I was one of the top 10 uh, selected students to, uh, to go to the Asia Pacific Youth Exchange in Thailand. And what we do in Asia Pacific Youth Exchange is that there are uh, a, a youth gathering and that youth are sent to a, a local community and we are doing a research on that local community and derive what that local community needs in relations to SDGs. So the project which we derive should focus as much as SDGs. So it can be a multiple of SDGs in one project, which is focused. So uh, after going through this Asia Pacific Youth Exchange, I was highly empowered. I wanted to bring those kind of changes and I wanted to, uh, to make the youth in my community to experience what I have experienced. And in that program in Asia Pacific Youth Exchange, there is a class uh, on introduction to sustainable development goals. And that introduction to sustainable development goals was actually taken up by Movers Program. At that time, I did not know it was a Movers Program. I just know that there is one person who teaches introduction to sustainable development goals. And the next Asia Pacific Youth Exchange, it was held uh, uh, in India, actually in Mizoram. And in that, in that also, we have, and again, introduction to SDGs as one of the as one of the uh, as one of the modules, and at that time I was not the participants anymore. I was the facilitator who helped the participants. And uh, there is a mover coordinator called Anisha, and Anisha has perfectly explained what is SDGs, and also she she actually introduced me to Movers Program. And when I look at Movers Program in their website, there are different modules. For example, introduction to SDGs, climate change gender equality, quality education. So there are so many modules which can be learned. And when I learn, I can also teach my community. So I was really fascinated by their modules. And, it, and any movers workshop, it's not like a conventional workshop where the facilitator talk for one hour and the audience just keep listening. There is, it is a very creative, it is very fun, it is very engaging. And to me personally, I have not ex uh, experienced that kind of a workshop, interactive workshop. So I wanted to be a part of that. And I registered myself. I attended as much workshop as possible so that I can also become a facilitator later. And so uh, from the workshops I have attended, uh, after many workshops, I, I have learned that now I can actually conduct a workshops. And I started conducting workshops, one workshop lead to two, two to three, and there are so many workshops that I have conducted. And by being in the movers program, I was able to have a, a create a kind of a network. So in movers that in movers program, youths from across Asia Pacific comes together. And in that program, there will be lots and lots of opportunities which are shared between the youth. And it was from this movers program that I got to know what is youth engagement in climate action platform, which is YCAP, and also which is uh, Generation Unlimited and also art organization. It started with movers program and through my networking and by attending different types of functions or programs, which I know from movers program, I begin to uh, apply for the fellowship. I begin to be a part of this Generation Unlimited and Art Day organization, Young Ambassador. So I started uh, sending out applications and there are so many organizations which rejected me, but among those, I am lucky and I am fortunate to be in those uh, selected uh, participants or fellows in YCAP, uh, Generation Unlimited, and in a day organization. So it started with Movers Program and through my engagement with Movers Program and through my networking, I started to do all those kind of other works, which all focus on uh, youth engagement, especially in the development of youth in 21st century skills, and also especially focusing on climate action. Do I answer your question? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, that's uh, uh, what I can see is like uh, the SDGs are like your ABCs. Uh, yes. You know, it's like, you know, you, uh, they, they, they're the basis of uh, the work that you do. And uh, hmm. I, I can see that a lot of uh, a lot of the time you're, you're talking about the SDGs, especially for the youth, you're really interested mm. in that to provide that mm. to the youth and uh, really make it uh, the new language of the world, mm. uh, right? Yes. And, uh, uh, and it's wonderful to see that, you know, it, it takes uh, 
uh, you know the kind of courage and confidence that you have in interacting and uh, you know mm-hmm. the way you're, you're being there with the people and you know the, you know conducting the workshops and then you know uh, not stopping uh, really you know uh, you you're being unstoppable basically so that's wonderful to mm-hmm. see and that's very inspiring for the youth who is listening right now to this about your journey it's very nice thank you so much thank you for that and uh, uh, moving further on if you can uh, let us know more about uh, your the organization chavi khan right mm. uh, yes. if you can let us know how it got formed and uh, oh, you know <laughs> your journey there as well yes i'll be happy to talk about this <laughs> So it's called Zoi Khan. So it is our regional language, the Zoi language, and it can be translated to as uh, to uplift. So our organization comes into being uh, during August, July, August 2020. So at that time, there was a huge pandemic. And uh, so everybody was locked up inside our room. And in during that time, there is a competition called uh, Global Uh, uh idea innovation contest so in that me and my friends were uh, participating at the, in the beginning we do not know what project are we going to uh, present in that competition and uh, uh, and when we start taking the courses which they offered in that competition and when we analyze our society especially the society of mizoram the the state of mizoram the pandemic really really affects our state and to be very honest uh, in compared to other states of india uh, we are highly dependent on imports although we have rich biodiversity the handlooms the handicrafts the landscape it's very very beautiful and we are very very rich in uh, handicrafts and handlooms but most of our basic needs we still depends on imports and because of pandemic there is a closing of the borders national and international borders and because of that a lot and lots of there is a there is a realization among the population of mizoram that we need to uh, uh, have a self reliance we need we, uh, we do not have to depend on other states or other or other uh, countries uh, to support ourselves so there is a, right, a realization among the youth that uh, the uh, about the uh, the importance of local entrepreneurship so lots of youth tap into their uh into their creativeness or into their talent and some have produced uh for example from from waste products some uh they created a beautiful uh a crafts and some are making a soap some are making pickles some are making chocolate so lots of you tap into their interest they use their creativity and come out with different types of products and we find that some youth who are very well connected are very good in marketing and they can sell their products but there are also other youths and especially not only youth there are housewives and uh, other type of uh, other people who are not well connected so they and they do not use they they do not know how to use uh, internet as much as others so it is and in during those time in pandemics nobody goes to the market so everybody sells their stuffs Uh, through online so we have found that there is an inequality on the access to the internet and also in the access to marketing and advertising so we wanted to help those people who do not uh, know how to use the internet not know how to use the internet who lack the 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 knowledge of using the internet as as efficiently and as effectively as others so we wanted to help those so that is how so it can actually begins so to uplift we want to uplift those, those local entrepreneurs in advertising or in creating partnership so uh, using our connections using our networking we have promoted their products and i am happy to mention that the business that we produce have uh, significantly increased their sales after our advertisement or after they uh, after we promote them and from going to that we also uh, uh, find that there is a need to inculcate 21st century skills in the youth of mizoram because i myself before before i begin all this journey i am very shy to talk to people i do not know how to network but through my training i have learned a lot 
So I wanted to uh, uh, to spread the things that I have acquired from this training to my fellow youth, especially among the, the Mizo tribe. So among the youth of the Mizo tribe. So not only we want to promote these local, uh, local entrepreneurs, we want to use the internet as much as possible so that the youth can learn from the internet. At that time, they, they, they cannot go out. So we use the internet so that they, we can help the youth uh, and, uh, and tell them about the different opportunities that are there and the internships, the free courses, the volunteering opportunities, and of course, the workshops. So uh, uh, beginning from uh, promoting these local entrepreneurs, we started also engaging the youth and try to promote the youth uh, in 21st century skills in building their leadership, communication skills, and also spreading uh, awareness on SDGs. So that is the work of our organization, which is Soikan. That is absolutely wonderful. You know, like uh, it's a, it's a really divine to, uh, you know, not only learn from your by yourself, but to give it to others. You know, you're just giving what you learned and what, how you develop. You're giving that to others, and uh, you know, true to its name, you know, it's act, uplifting the entire community, the youth, women. You know, you're uh, you you are focusing on all aspects of the society and. Uh, you know, really developing them. So that's that's a wonderful initiative, and uh, we really wish you all the best. And also, thank you uh, so much. You know, I hope it spreads to other parts of the country as well. People watching this, mm. we can, we may be having other people who can other also start you know initiatives like this, like what you have, and that would inspire them in their own uh, indigenous tribe, indigenous communities. So uh, th this is not only for. You, uh, where you are, it's for the entire uh, India and for the entire world also. That's awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And uh, you know, can you let us know about uh, uh, you know Youth for Sustainability India Alliance and its initiatives? Oh yes. So uh, the. Uh how i got associated with youth for sustainability in the alliance is actually i'm going to link with the previous answers to the question so during one of the workshops of movers program the the coordinator or the one of the uh, one of the secretary secretariat of youth for sustainability in the alliance uh, come and talk to us about uh, sustainable living minimalism and sustainable living and responsible consumption and production. And uh, I was very fascinated with the way she talked. And at the end of the, her lecture, she, she mentioned about the, this Youth for Sustainability in the Alliance and what, are they, uh, what they have done. And at that time, I just started uh, uh, my organization and I wanted to learn as much as I can from other big organizations, which has already done so much. And I, during, at the end of the workshop, I, I type on the chat box and, and ask for her LinkedIn profile. And then I started immediately converse, uh, conversing with Violeta. So she is the secretary of the Youth for Sustainability in the Alliance. And I wanted to know more about uh, Youth for Sustainability in the Alliance. And... Uh, at that time, since uh, my organization was not uh, officially registered under government, we are just youth initiatives. So there is, uh, a th uh, there is another type of uh, 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 alliance or a type of gathering for those type of youth initiatives, which is called Youth for Sustainability India Clubs. So now we are under the clubs. So... Uh, to make it short or to make it simple, uh, I have connected with Wileta. So as I mentioned, who is the secretary of the YFS in the Alliance. And since I have connected with her, I am under their clubs. And whatever the Alliance has done, the clubs are informed. And I have been associated through their clubs in their various initiatives. And so what is Youth for Sustainability in the Alliance? So it is an alliance where right now there are 51 organizations and counting. And they, all these organizations, what they have 
in common is that they work for SDG number 12, which is responsible consumption and production, and SDG number 13, which is climate action, and also youth development. So all these organizations, this 51 organization works for those three objectives or those three goals. And these 51 organizations are under one roof, which is called Youth for Sustainability in the Alliance. And under this roof of YFS in the Alliance, we have created a partnership between these different organizations. For an example, if organization A wants to organize something, they just put that uh, notification under the group and there, those different other organizations will start collaboration. And right now, or now we know the importance of partnership because no organization can function alone. We need partners in one way or the other. So one of the aspects of uh, YFS in the Alliance is that we offer partnership between these organizations so that they can work more efficiently so that they can work more effectively in bringing this sustainable in the achievement of sustainable development goals 12, 13, and youth development. And right now I am the project coordinator of the Alliance, where in the beginning I was just uh, seeing their work and just asking them uh, how I can be a part and then keep on involving in their voluntary work, attending their workshops. And now I'm the coordinator of the YFS in the Alliance. And that uh, the things that we have done is coordinating these organizations which work for SDG 12, 13, and youth so that they can have a better partnership and work more efficiently and effectively. Wow, that's uh, again, uh, very, uh, excellent to uh, know about that. And thank you for sharing that. Uh, like, as you said, you know, we are all a community. Mm -hmm. It's a global community, right? And, uh, you know, partnership is the key to fight yes. climate action. Uh, and uh, initiatives like this only will bring people together, you know. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it shows us that, you know, together we can uh, create an impact. Alone we can mm -hmm. make a difference, but together we can create an impact. Yes. And, uh, and remember, sustainable development goal number 17 is partnership for the goal. So we cannot achieve any goals without partnership. Without partnership, exactly, yes. And it's, uh, uh, so, you know, alliances like this would really help to achieve that. And uh, I can see that, you know, you are aligned to uh, uh, SDG 12, 13, and 17 uh, very well, mm. right? Yeah. And I'm happy to inform that Nature's Orbit is going to be a part of YFS in the Alliance soon. So we are going to have an onboarding and Nature's Orbit is going to be a part of the Alliance. <laughs> Wow, wow, that's superb. That's awesome news. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. that would be uh, uh, excellent, you know, for us and uh, to be part of this initiative, definitely. Uh, and uh, it will uh, increase our reach uh, and uh, mm -hmm. make an impact. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you for the wonderful news. So, uh, uh, what is the message you'd like to give to the youth of our country? and to the entire world so that they take mm. climate action right now and what are the consequences if they don't okay so the uh, the first uh, thing that i wanted to uh, send a message to all the youth here is that if you are if you have access to the internet if you have access to your laptop if you have access to your smartphone Remember that that is a privilege. There are lots and lots of youth among in the villages, in the tribal community who do not have access to the internet, who do not have access to phones or laptops. Forget about laptops. They do not have phones. So remember that while you attend online classes without any difficulties, there are lots and lots of your fellow youth who cannot attend online classes because they have no internet or phones or laptops. So make use, if you have internet connection, it's a privilege and please make use of it. Please make use of it in volunteering, learn as much courses as possible, help as much as others you can. Make use of your privilege. And coming into climate action, I wanted to send a message to all my fellow youth that, no, uh, that we, we, nobody expect from you, from 
uh, nobody expect as much as you can give. The reason why I'm saying is that there are lots of youth who say that I am not a researcher, I am not the head of an organization, I am not this, I do not have a big personality, so I cannot do anything. So please remember that what you can do is enough. It can be just switching off the light when you're not there. It can be just switching off the tap water when you're not in use. So I wanted to also make sure the importance of 1%. So 100% cannot be achieved without 1%. 100% is achieved with the accumulation of 1%. So I take this inspiration from this Atomic Habits, which is a book which I read. So please know the importance of 1%. You may think that what you can give is not much, but it counts. So every action counts. There is no action that is big. There is no action that is small. Every action counts. So please remember that your efforts count and you are good enough in making a climate action. So that those are the two messages which I wanted to give to my fellow youth. Wow, that's uh, excellent. And uh, you know, uh, about uh, you said, uh, making use of the resources that you have uh, like the internet to to really reach out and you know to to communicate communication is the key and uh, yes. you know even that 1% that 1% your 1% is uh, you know giving 100% so there's nothing less mm. there's no less or more kind of thing you know everything if any any contribution is a contribution uh, but the point is to take action and contribute that is the thing yeah, that's that's a very and nice also, uh, message. I wanted to make sure to the, all the youths that please also take care of yourself. Yeah, I know many youths who are working tirelessly on this, so please take care of yourself mentally, physically, or spiritually. Because if you take care of yourself, only you can take care of of others. So please also take care of yourself so that you can take care of your take care of others. So this is what we always tell in movers program, take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. So that is my last message. <laughs> take care of yourself so that you can take care of your others. It's like, you know, the same thing that they say about love yourself and you can love others. Yes. Yes. Right. So that uh, it, yes. it comes under the same um, umbrella, I guess. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that, that brings us to the end of uh, our, uh, the 12th episode of the Nature's Orbit uh, Torchlight series. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for uh, giving your time, sir. And, uh, you know, it was a wonderful conversation that we had on this, uh, you know, we couldn't have asked for a better conversation on Environmental Day. Uh, you being uh, the youth icon for uh, the environment uh, and, uh, you know, for sustainability. So uh, thank you so much for your time. It was an utmost uh, privilege and honor for us to, for, for, you, for you to be here with us and uh, for Nature's Orbit to be a part of this conversation. Uh, and I'm thank sure this so. conversation will make a huge impact and a huge difference to many of the youth out there who are listening to this, uh, mm. uh, you know, what, what, what you spoke about today. Uh, mm. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for having me and I wish all the best to all the works of Nature's Orbit. Uh, 